Welcome to the Deadly Dixon's channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a favorite movie of mine, Starship Troopers. This is a movie I never get tired of. It's got enough campy action that it really gets me through over and over. It was made in 1997, directed by Paul Verhoeven. And it stars Casper Van Dien, Dina, Dina Myers, Denise Richards, Michael Ironside, and so on. I think Jake Busey is in this too. So it's a sci-fi action. It's based on a novel by Robert A. Heinlein's. Uh, it's a novel based on uh, an infantry troop in the future. And there's a lot of stuff in the books that's different from the movie, but the movie caught my attention. I was really into it. I had a lot of fun. Um, you get so many plays on propaganda and how the, um, uh, you know, like m the media works with the uh, military. It just really hits a lot of those notes and it does it well, which I don't think the book does so much. I think Paul Verhoeven took this idea and said, you know what, I'm going to show some of the um, issues with certain things. Really fun movie and action packed. I watched it so many times and I don't really get tired of it. Now, there are sequels that are bad. The rest of them were like, uh, I don't know, it's hard to say now, direct to DVD type movies or direct to streaming nowadays. I think there's uh, three of them and there's animated movies also. I really love the um they did an animated cgi called roughnecks starship troopers chronicles that is amazing it's a perfect blend of the movie and the book you got mech suits and uh campaign episodes that uh wrapped up like on five episode arcs really really good i wish it didn't end the way it did but that is something to look into if you're a real fan of Starship Troopers. Go find Roughnecks, Starship Troopers Chronicles. It's done well. It is amazing in my opinion. But getting back to the movie, it didn't do, it wasn't critically acclaimed. It, it made its money back. But over the years developed one of those cult followings. And talk about Paul Verhoeven. I mean, this guy has a unique way of filming he, it comes through in the movies you watch. I'm familiar with Flesh and Blood, which is an old medieval type uh, movie. Uh, but Robocop, Total Recall, Basic Instinct, <clears throat> Showgirls, <laughs> Hollow Man. He's done a lot of stuff up to recently, which I didn't see Vendetta. But I love him as a director. There are just some things you find of his that you're not even sure. But you can feel his touch on this. He's got he's that, that type of director. And you're gonna look at this movie and see all the fun it's making of um you know how everything works and it really centers on uh the twenty third century. We're like colonizing other planets and I think it's Brazil is hit with a meteor. And after investigation they find that their meteor was directed towards us. And there you go, we're in a, a war with the bugs. I think on the animated Roughnecks, they're called, uh, they call them arachnids. And there's a hint of humans evolving to have low-level psychic abilities. And they're weeded out through the uh, program that gets you into the uh, infantry. But the whole thing, the mobile infantry, the cut-ins from commercials for them and newsreels it is hilarious it is a great um window into this world so they go and investigate they get into this encounter with the bugs and it's a real real gruesome story and in some ways shows a lot of carnage a lot of death and a lot of stupidity from humans in general which is uh um, not hard to do, but it's good to see on the film that, you know, yeah, I want to see great action movies. I love aliens and stuff, 
But when you put a twist on this and you're making it like our government and our society has these awesome commercials and treats the military like uh, rock stars in a way and all the propaganda going towards their goals and, you know, leaning towards it and convincing it. It's just really prominent. It litters the whole movie. It breaks it up really cool. And you get this pretty good action movie. And you look at the stars in this movie, none of the names really, well, Michael Ironside's been around for a while, but he's never been the, uh, you know, main man on the ticket, so to speak. This is not a cast that has gone on and been super uh, famous, except for Neil Patrick Harris, who has done so much TV, he's probably got awards up his ass and whatever. There's um, not that many in, uh, instances like this where you, you don't point to the director and say, this guy has a certain type of magic. He will make it work with what he's got. Because you can go on and see about these other people's movies and stuff and yeah people don't get breaks and stuff but so i'm really giving it uh, the director a really um high marks for this what he was able to do with the novel and you're adapting it the political satire um look at the visual effects in the movie were great for the time and even hold up there's a love interest there's a like i said there's a human nature and stupidity this um, gung-ho infantry type attitude and it's prevalent throughout the whole movie but it doesn't spoil it the, the movie doesn't you know hit you over the head so much it does in certain ways but it does, you know what you're getting and it doesn't ruin the aspect of the movie like other experiences could or have there are certain things where you're they're trying to be sophisticated about what they're trying to tell you and it's blatantly obvious this is just blatantly obvious, and it's like satire, and it's a real, real thrill ride. So, you've got a great action movie, you've got some political satire, it touches on, you know, uh, the behind-the-scenes stuff in military and Hollywood, let's say. And forgetting about the sequels, which kind of suck. Now, there you go with the um, director, right? You could If he directed the other ones, I could say maybe... You know, we could, um, you know, kind of dispel my argument about him being a special type director, although not every director can direct everything amazing. But he was a producer on The Roughnecks, I believe, and might have had some input, which is why I really love that animated show. It's like a CG animated, um, like I, 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 maybe I'll do a whole podcast on that, but this is a movie I recommend. It's fun. Is it for kids? Probably not. It has a lot of blood and gore. There's, um, you know, just a high level of, uh, you know, <laughs> shit going on that I don't know if, um, what does it say if it was rated? What, what it came out as? Hmm. I wonder where you find something like that real quick. Well, the budget was $105 million and made 121 Yeah, he's not going to be made a success, but you're not going to get um a big cult following there was things in this movie that have done really well you might not compare him with or the movie with like um scorsese and spielberg in that sense when you look back on his movies he just knows the buttons to hit for me maybe right like john carpenter is like my favorite director but i can't say he's the best like objectively i wouldn't you know i might not vote for him over like spielberg or something like that so yeah, you, you play with that, but you got a movie that's fun, action-packed from beginning to end, a little bit of a love story, uh, exposing human nature, the stupid things we do, how we act, and then we got this satire on the political landscape with news reports and uh, commercials and killing the bugs, do your part at home, and people are stepping on like fucking roaches or something. It's fucking off the chains it's off the rails it's got so much um going for it in my opinion that i totally recommend this if you haven't seen starship troopers i think you got to you might want to avoid some of the uh sequels you know what i watched i watched them and i think maybe there's one that's okay i don't know my brain is like 
more focused on the Roughnecks because I would go Starship Troopers and then watch um, Roughnecks, the Starship Troopers Chronicle. Because I was fascinated by that. I was so into it because it kind of bridged the gap of the books. It's like when you, um, like Jurassic Park, the novels, like, you know, you have high power weapons and vehicles, and but they don't really go that route in, in the movies. And granted, Jurassic Park, one of the best movies of its kind, still holds up. It's amazing. You know, the director took the right choice. And I think he did that here. He took this action sci fi movie. And really turned it on its head, implemented so much stuff that's really fun, and it carries you along. A lot of movies you don't want to sit there, especially when they're doing spoofs or, you know, they're, they're putting their own political slant and they have an agenda and they want to show how, you know, biased and how crazy media is. And, you know, you find out about the ties between the military and Hollywood and, you know, things that they want um, let out, for uh, lack of a better word, and what input they give on certain movies that have aspects of military in it and what message are they trying to send i look at things in a different way maybe i don't like the fact that we haven't been in a legitimate war since the i don't know 40s or 50s and that we keep finding out that our men and women go and fight for our country and do what is perceived as honorable things and then come back and realize you know, this was bullshit. Let's just talk about Iraq, right? Weapons of mass destruction. Oh, we had to go in there. Right? You find out, and then what do these people do? I really have a problem with that because I'm really into mental health and to, you know, issues like that and suicide amongst military and police. You can see the numbers, and it's it's not good. And I like when people expose these things, and it's not maybe exposing that aspect, but it goes into it enough that you're... You know, you're wrapped up in this story, uh, Earth has been attacked, and you're like, oh, you know, what anybody would do. You can imagine, you know, people start um, signing up, you know, enlist, I want to get enlisted, I want to go. Because when 9-11 happened, well, I, we would have, I would have talks with my friends, and one of the things was the, the atmosphere was so tense that if the government of the United States had said, Everybody go to your docks, get on a boat, we're going to equip you, and we're going to go and we're going to take over the Middle East, or we're going to get the people who did this. Millions and millions of people would have gotten on those boats. And it just shows you how interesting, terrifying it is when you think of how many guns are in America. You look at armies, you look at certain uh, aspects. Go look at a 20-block radius of Brooklyn, New York, where I live. Manhattan, the Bronx. I mean, I'm just talking about New York because I'm more familiar. I grew up here and I live here. Multiply that. And these are people who will would have gotten on a fucking boat, would have went and became holy hell, for lack of a better word, and uh, seek justice on the world. And it would have been millions and millions of people. I have no doubt about that. And I think this shows that it's, um, I think they do a class thing in the movie too. So when you graduate school, you're expected to go to Korea military and uh, certain citizen benefit, uh, benefits. Of course, I think there's a little highlight there in an aspect when it's, uh, you want to become a citizen. And it's like, oh, you got to go through this. Um, you know, this program, so to speak. And there's a little bit of love, like I said. You'll get that story in there. Um, but there's a lot of hijinks, a lot of out there things. But the special effects are great. They hold up to them for the most part. I talk about sometimes, like, um, you want to redo, you want to spend money and reduce CGI in old movies. Take the Terminator, the first one amazing movie you go back and you change some of those little things about the plastic looking face when he's messing with his eye some of the robot things and you just touch up that that movie will be almost a flawless masterpiece 
And I think it's a a hard earned skill. Uh, takes in talent and I like the thing, John Carpenter's thing. It was doing special effects things. It was ingenuitive, and when you look back at it, you can see it. But you got to give it credit for the time and what they were doing. I think back to the Lon Chaney werewolf and the hair on the face, the way they like. There are, you know, certain people who will use the best of what they got, and I think Paul Verhoeven does this to a certain extent. Uh, I can't go back to his um, past history like when he first started in 1960. But looking at the stuff uh, as an overview and going back and going, oh, you know, I remember that movie. That movie's great. You see it in his work. And you don't have to be living in a bubble to be a you know, fan of Robocop, Total Recall, and not know his twist on it. It's here in Starship Troopers, and it um, elevates it to another level. Like I said, you're not seeing a lot of these stars and other things becoming breakthrough stars. Uh, what is it like? George Clooney was on ER, and then boom, movie star. It didn't happen here. And the opposite maybe happened with Neil Patrick Harris becoming a superstar on TV. And he seems like a really nice guy. That's another big thing, too. You don't want to be viewed as a asshole. And I'd like to see uh, some of his earlier work, Paul Verhoeven, and get the uh, impression of what it was like. Uh, like, um, what does the Twin Peaks? Uh, that guy's interesting, too. In any case, I recommend Starship Troopers. Fun, action, sci-fi. It's got a twist to it and some satire that's really powerful. There's uh, strong emotions, like I said, you know, uh, Earth has been attacked. We have an enemy. Uh, let's unite. Let's go out there. And we cause havoc and there's war and blood and guts. There's, um, there's a lot on that angle, but that political satire goes over everything, that classism. And it's just something to watch in this day and age. Uh, Give it a try. I, I totally recommend this movie, especially if you're an action junkie. In any case, I hope everybody's doing well. They're starting to lift restrictions, and we'll see what's going on. Uh, my aunt's got the vaccine. My mom hasn't. I do a lot of delivery work, so I'll be wearing a mask for uh, probably a while. In any case, hope everybody's doing well. I'll talk to everybody next time. Take care.